Okay, so hi, my name's Connor, and I did Goldilocks as well. And so I first started with Goldilocks, and I had an oval as the original shape, but I decided that I didn't like that, because like, in the story she's described as like this evil girl who like, kind of like, intrudes on the bears, so I thought that that was just too happy shape, and the color didn't help at all either. Um, so then I went to a triangle, because that was more evil, and then I thought that maybe like a bland hair color would fit better, but then I, it turns out that I went, ended up going back to gold because the gray was like too bland of a color for the scene. Um, so then I put like, I um, just played around with putting like circles and ovals as her hair and ended up going with um, the bottom one with like a half circle and then like a bunch of little circles to like represent her hair. And then the three bears, I started with like a lighter brown with like a rounded rectangle because like I thought that that would be a good shape because it wasn't like too hard of a shape, it had like the softed edges and stuff, but I found that I didn't really like that. Um, so I changed the color and then added like um, some like gold lines to kind of add more difference besides the size, like the size of the bear, so I put like a thick one for the big one, a middle one for the small one. But I didn't like that either, so then I tried putting a whole bunch of circles together, but that was just too abstract to be the bears, like, <laughs> let's be real. Um, and so then I ended up going with the final one, which is just like um, a whole bunch of circles to like form the bear. And then the first scene, I started with like a kind of like side view of the house, and like that's a window, and like three bears are leaving into the woods. But I didn't like the composition, nor did I really like like how um, it like looked on the screen. So I ended up changing the house to then leaving like towards the front. And then I changed the color of the door to black. But um, then in the next one, I ended up changing it to white because I thought that that, like, because they're not evil bears. Like, they're, they're the innocent ones in the story, and like, she's the one that's intruding on them. So I ended up putting their houses, like, I changed the doorway to being white, because then it looks like a light, cheerful house. And then I added the bears leaving towards the front, and the, um, the footprints, like, showing that they're leaving the house. And then Goldilocks is kind of, like, peering out from, like, around the trees, because she's going to, like, go in when they're gone. Um, and then the next scene is them, or her eating the porridge, because they leave the porridge and they go for their walk to cool. Um, and so she's like testing the different bowls, and I like put her in the um, towards the middle because it just made a better composition. But I found that like there are too many circles because like what she's doing is evil. So I ended up adding like a triangular pattern going across the front because it helped the composition and it kind of added like a sense of what she's doing isn't good; it's bad. Um, so that was the final scene for that. Um, and then the third scene. I wanted to put her in a bed, and so I started with just like a simple mattress because I thought that that would look good. Um, and then I put the bears like in like a diagonal line across the screen, so it made a good composition. Um, but I thought it was like a lot of negative space just everywhere, and it was kind of heavy down there. So I ended up um, adding some like trees to the window and some like floorboards to make a wood floor. Um, and then I ended up adding a door because I thought that, that was still a lot of empty space over there. And I added like a bed frame because it made, it just looked better. <laughs> it looked more like a bed, so it was kind of abstract before. And then in the final version, well, I guess that's it, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to put it in slides or yeah. okay. Drag that window over so that people aren't distracted. Um, no, I mean make oh. it bigger. I'm sorry. Pull the bottom corner there, and then people aren't distracted by all that background stuff. And you can make those a little bigger, so we can. to see her hair um, because of the yellow background. Um, 
Are there anything about not making yellow the wall color, maybe playing with some of the other colors, trying to make it work? You don't want black, I don't think, because then it would feel like daunting. But maybe even the white or something back there. Um, another thing you could do, you could move one of the bears so like where so it could just like cover some of the wall and then the the yellow or gold would stand out. You know? So you don't have to change the yeah, think about the potential of putting the biggest and therefore the most ominous bear behind you, move the window over a little bit, you know, and you could get, you could solve that problem that way. There are other ways too. Um, the idea that they just suggested, I understand why you would do that, but then you might run into a problem where you can't see, you can't tell where the bear and the bed stop and start. Uh, it looks like the bear might be enough to where you could, but I I know PowerPoint sometimes isn't the easiest. You try to put something somewhere and it has its own mind sometimes where it wants it, so it could interfere with that. It could create that. a new problem, yeah. saying, but there would still be a yeah. chance to solve that problem. Yeah. I think what you could do was have the bears surround the bed more. Mm -hmm. And like you can put the biggest bear in front of the window, behind the bed, on the other side. That way they're all around her instead of having them in that straight line. Yeah. You should have just add like some eyes to the bears because like I don't know if they're facing like the wall. Like, I could see them like facing the wall because they don't have no eyes or nothing. And, you know, like if you see yeah. a person from behind, you mm -hmm. just see it like with nothing. So, um. Did we see the final scene? Like, like, did I fast forward through that? Yeah, I, yeah you see Because like, you you like, I thought right? there was one more slide. Okay. Yeah. Really quick, just look at this because mm -hmm. this is the final version. Okay. Oh. So, this is like, so I added. The doorknob and like the door frame to make that more interesting, and that's all that really changed. So that was the point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the door frame, though, you needed to move um, that interior line there behind the little one. Yeah, you did fast oh, forward yeah. to because I saw that line <laughs> just for a yeah. second, and I noticed the line. Just I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that they're right though that it's it's a good one, but it can be better. <laughs> And the issue you have, there may be Goldilocks also. I'm kind of curious about this because Goldilocks is the home invader. I mean, you know, she's a criminal. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you talk about her making her seem more menacing, which with the pattern on the wall there, et cetera. But I notice that people are often with this fairy tale willing to. Uh, do her hairstyle, but they leave her garbed in white like a little angel. You know, you could put a zigzag pattern or something nasty on her dress, too, you know, and that would help with making her stand out in the bed and getting across the fact that she's a little brat. Now, I know a little girl comes to this house. We don't like to call her a home invader, but, you know, if you're around a six, seven, eight-year-old kid long enough, you know, they can be pretty nasty. And she goes in and she spoils their dinner and she, you know, gets in their beds, etc. She probably had her hands all sticky from porridge and went in there and got the beds all messy. She's a problem child, no doubt about it. <laughs> Other comments? Oh, for um, the first thing, like whenever you have like the white door, you should have add like a door knob because it looks like there's no door. Or have like depth within it yeah. to show that the door is open still and show the inner, yeah. the inside of okay. the door. Some way to solve that problem. Uh, I like how you had feet on the bear, but there's no hands, so I don't know what happened to their arms like if they went and they went out in the forest on the walk and you can't see them then and then they came back and they got chopped off somewhere so adding like just a little like thing like you did with the feet could just or take off the feet I don't know if I do that yeah so
So uh, because the, I the figure itself, I don't think, would look as good without it. Yeah. They wouldn't right. be standing solidly. They'd be up on an oval. Um, yeah, this is the point where, you know, if you're going to add hands and arms, etc., it's the point where you've got to really ask yourself what all you're going to, um, you know, eyes, I think, were mentioned and arms, etc. What do you really need? Now, they could, and theoretically, all be standing there with their arms behind their backs and just, you know, disgusted and going, tis, 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 we've got a messy child in the bed, you know, or something like that. You have to ask yourself what, I, I do agree that making them directional with something, eyes or with hands in front of them or something might work, but you're going to have to ask yourself what you gain by one particular look over another there. But it's a, it is a good point. They're, they're just a little too spectral, a little too much like ghost bears for some of what's happening in there. But overall, this is uh, very well done. I think you know, you've thought a lot about the composition of each slide. Uh, we have difficulty knowing who should go first among the commenters because you're not calling on them by name. You are <coughs> call on your classmates by name. That's why we spend all that time talking about learning names there. But um, aside from that, I think you presented it well. And, you know, the little blip on the last slide was not a big deal there. Um, but I, I really was impressed with their ability to use the whole slide and to really think about composition of the slide. I thought that was a, one of the really strong, strong points of this. Other problems you can work out before you put it in your portfolio. I have one thing on your top right. I know that I heard like you had a mistake, and I don't know if that was your mistake or if it was like the bears. Something happened. I don't know what your exact mistake was that you had that you, you were talking about that you emailed her about. Oh no, it was it was about actually. I think he corrected it after the email exchange, and I just didn't get the email until then. Oh okay, but the top like right corner has like a lighter brown. Uh yeah. I think it's the same brown as the bears. It's the same brown as the bears. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm going to choose the black, but I just, is that supposed to be the sky? It's, no, yeah, it's just the horizon. It's just the horizon. Okay. It's kind of like empty up there, so I thought I needed to put it. Okay. You know, how some of you envision these, you got to remember, um, the story is they are in the woods. And so if you create a, a horizon line, you're probably not going to have a blue bright sky above it. You know, it's, it's still going to be a dark area because of all the trees. Okay, thank you very much.